In this video, we're going to talk all about the different access methods available to the Oracle Optimizer. My name is Maria Colgan, and I'll be your host. So what are access methods? Well, access methods or access paths are the techniques Oracle uses to retrieve the data necessary to answer your particular query. And how many access paths or methods do you think are available to the Oracle Optimizer? Well, it turns out there are nine possible access paths. The Oracle Optimizer only has nine access paths or methods available to it. So it's actually very easy for you to understand what each of these nine access methods are and when the optimizer is going to apply them. Let's now go through each of the nine options the optimizer has. The first access path is probably the best known, and that's a full table scan. How does it work? It reads all the rows in the table and filters out any rows that don't match the where clause predicates specified in the query. So when does the optimizer pick a full table scan? The optimizer will select a full table scan if there are no indexes created on the table. It may also select a full table scan if a parallel degree has been specified on the table. Executing a full table scan in parallel can greatly reduce the cost of the scan because the cost is calculated by taking the cost of a serial scan and dividing it by the parallel degree that's been specified on the table. Increasing the database parameter DB multi-block read count will also reduce the cost of a full table scan and therefore increase the chances of the optimizer picking it. However, making a change of this sort where you're changing the default value of a database parameter is not recommended as it has the potential to impact all SQL statements being executed on the system and may result in a number of suboptimal execution plans. Finally, you can hint a full table scan as the access method to the optimizer by specifying the full hint in your SQL statement. Table access by row ID is also a very common one. And the, what it means is that the row ID is going to be supplied to that full table scan. So what is a row ID? A row ID is an address or an indicator that tells me in which data file and inside which data block in that data file, I'm going to find a particular row. So along with the data file and the block number, I also get the offset or the location of that row inside the block. It's basically a shortcut to a particular row in a table. And so when it's table accessed by row ID, those row IDs are either supplied via an index access or perhaps directly in the where clause predicate, but they're gonna give me that shortcut to find the rows I need in the table. So let's move on to indexes now. An index unique scan is probably the most preferred execution plan. Why? Because only one row is guaranteed to be returned by that operation, but it's only going to be used if the table in question has a unique or a primary key index specified on it, and we have an equality predicate on that primary key or unique key. That will give me an index unique scan. Much more common is an index range scan. An index range scan accesses adjacent leaf blocks inside of my index. And what it does is it returns the row ID values for the entries in those blocks. Now it's used if I have an equality predicate on a non-unique column or non-unique index. And it's also used if I've got a range predicate on a unique index. So if I have where the primary key is between eight and 24, then instead of an index unique scan, I'll actually get an index range scan. An index skip scan is a lot less common, certainly in the older versions of the Oracle database. In more recent versions from 12C onwards, you actually may see an index skip scan more frequently. What it means is that the where clause predicates you have include where clause predicates on the other columns in the index, but not the leading column, not the leading edge of that index, whatever the first column is in that index. And so an index skip scan says, we're gonna skip over that first value in the index because the subsequent values you've got in that multi-column index, 
do have wear clause predicates on them and they're actually very selective. In other words, there's a high number of distinct values in those subsequent columns, meaning that the index could still be very valuable to us because it will help reduce a large number of rows that we need to operate in. A full index scan doesn't actually read all of the blocks in that index the way the name would imply. You do read all of the leaf blocks in the index, but you only read enough of the branch blocks in order to find that first leaf block. Now, it is typically used to do a full index scan if all of the columns we need for this query are present in the index and the order by clause that you've got in your query also matches the order by these columns in the index. The reason why that correlation between the order by and the index is if the columns in our index match that order by clause, then we've already got the data in a sorted format and we don't need to do an additional sort operation to satisfy that order by. A fastful index scan, on the other hand, does read all of the blocks in the index and it's effectively a replacement for a full table scan. So instead of reading all of the blocks in the table, I can read all of the blocks in the index because that index has all of the columns that I need to answer this particular query. And this is the only index access path that you can do in parallel. That's right, a fast full table scan does use multi-block read and can be done in parallel. Last two are probably less common than the ones we've looked at before, but still quite valuable. An index join happens when I've got a very, very wide table that has multiple indexes on it and two or more of those indexes accommodate all of the columns that I'm looking for in this incredibly large table. And it's more efficient for me to scan two of these indexes and hash join them together to get the result set rather than scanning the entire table. As I said, it's less common to occur, but it does occur if I've got incredibly wide tables that are also rather large, you can get an index join as an access method. The final one is if you take advantage of bitmap indexes, and this is typically more common in a data warehouse, especially if you've got a star schema style schema inside that data warehouse, you'll create bitmap indexes. What bitmap indexes are is they can train a key value and a mapping function that's going to convert each bit in that key into a row ID. And the reason why we use them so frequently in data warehousing, especially for star schemas, is that bitmap indexes can be and and or together based on your where clause predicates to come up with a final set of row IDs so that we only go to the table once and apply this combined bitmap to extract the row IDs that would perhaps satisfy multiple joins in that particular table or in that particular query. So where do I find these access methods in the plan? Well, I'm gonna find them in the operations column of our plan. How do I know what to do if I get the wrong access method? Well, the very first thing I do is I look at the cardinality estimate. And if that's accurate, then I'm gonna look at the join order because that may also influence the decision the optimizer is making for the access method. I'm gonna play a little game these last few minutes of today's webinar. I want you to take a look at the query before you and become the optimizer. Now you know the rules. You've only got nine choices of access methods. You've got a customer's table that's got 10,000 rows in it, and you've got a primary key index on the customer ID column. The where clause predicate says customer ID is in 100, 200, or 100,000. Now it's a non-equality predicate on a primary key what access method do you choose? Well, chances are you're gonna use that primary key index. So it's either an index range scan or it's an index unique scan. And in this case, it turns out to be an index unique scan. Now you may be saying to yourself, hang on Maria, you told me that if it's a non-equality predicate on a unique or primary key index, then it has to be an index range scan. And that is true unless the optimizer can transform that query or rewrite that query under the covers for you to turn that where clause predicate into an equality. And that's exactly what's happening here. Your in list was turned into a where clause predicate that said where the customer ID is equal to 100 or the customer ID is equal to 200 or the customer ID is equal to 100,000. 
that allowed us to go to the and do an index unique scan three times, one for each of the values, one, and allowed us to get a much more efficient execution plan for that query. What about this one? Same customer's table, same 10,000 rows, same primary key index. This time the customer ID is between 100 and 150. Index range scan, index unique scan. What do you think? Well, in this case, we can't do the same trick. Why? Because the optimizer doesn't know how many legitimate values you have between 100 and 150. And so it doesn't take the risk of rewriting the statement to have all 50 values. And so it simply does an index range scan. 